How do you silence distraction no matter how important to achieve your number one priority? Hmm. <clears throat> on, on op, when I was still a sniper, I actually had a much easier time of this. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm ADD in a lot of ways and, uh, Whatever I want to focus on, ADD doesn't mean that you can't focus on stuff. It just means like when the teacher tells you to focus on something, you're busy doing other stuff. And so, <laughs> right? It's not a deficit disorder. It's that I don't give a shit what you're trying to show me. But that right there, that's what I want to look at. So I um, I had a way of just, I would, like if I had to watch a crossroad, I watched, that crossroad was my whole world and it wouldn't matter what was now it doesn't mean i wasn't situationally aware but i would watch that crossroad like my my life depended on it or somebody's life depended on it which it which a lot of times it did (laughs) and um if i have another what what i found actually and this is one of the reasons why uh i'm starting to meditate again i'm seeing a therapist again um i'm listening to Jocko podcast and reading extreme ownership. Um, no, I'm and I'm being serious. That's awesome. Is that I appreciate in it. my civilian, post military, post wounded, post addiction um, world. phase world? I've I've lost a little bit of my ability to 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 push out the input I don't want. I have a hard I used to read a book a month at the at the minimum. And I'm not talking like a book. I'm talking like a book. You know that I showed you I had the 33 laws of war mm-hmm. uh, in my suitcase. Mm-hmm. I've been reading that for 3 months and I'm maybe half done. I have a real hard time now um, achieving that that zone of zero distraction. And I'm trying to get it back because it's really, I get a lot done. You know, I have, I have my my politics. I have the book. I do keynote speeches. Um, I have my kids. Um, I have all my hobbies. You know, I'm I'm trying to support veterans, support charities that support veterans, and uh, and I still get a lot done. But I could get so much more done if I could turn off some things in my mind sometimes. And I don't know what what's happened or what if this is what an addict's brain is like now or if it's just I'm always seeking something. I get bored easily. That's part of the EDD. I've always had that. But when I found something and latched onto it, I used to be like just I was 100% focused until I became, you know, I got as much of that as I could and then I would move on to the next thing. And... um yeah, I, I, I got to be honest. I've, I've visualization though. Going back to the first question, is one way that you can do it. And I've started meditating to get my mind back into that state. I used to do a lot of yoga, and I used to do a lot of mindfulness. Uh, not training. I don't know what people could, now. It's called mindfulness training. Back then, I think it was just called reflection or something. I call it jujitsu. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well. When I'm done the bodybuilding show in November, I, I will start jujitsu. Oh, you you might actually be starting jujitsu tomorrow, uh, my friend. <laughs> Just don't hurt me. <laughs> Doesn't hurt. Doesn't Everyone hurt I know who starts jujitsu hurts something. That's yeah. why I'm holding off. But and I would I will definitely come let you uh, ragdoll me. But uh, my point is that I've lost it, and I'm probably the last guy to give you advice right now on how to lock out the world because I have to put on headphones and crank music to get through a workout right now. And and I know this. I know I'm detrimental in it and I and I and I'm aware of it and I'm trying to correct it. And uh and it bugs the shit out of me. It really does. It makes me feel like less of a person. So let me tell you about a transition that I went through. Yes. Uh first of all, before the war, uh the military sent me to college. So I had to go to college and I as I said early, or as I've said before, I was super focused when I went to college. I'd been in the SEAL teams for 10 years. I was a go-getter. I was a hard charger. I was like, oh, you want me to read this book? Boom. I would sit down and just force myself to read it. And then got back to the SEAL teams 
And like, like when I went to college, I literally read every single thing that I was assigned. And nobody does that in college. Nobody does that. I read every single page of every single thing I was assigned during college. That's ridiculous. It's almost a waste of time. It's almost embarrassing. Echo definitely thinks it's a waste of time. But, but it was because I just could just gr- lock my brain right. down and get it done. Yeah. So then get back to the teams and in the teams, officer in the teams, you have a lot of administrative paperwork right. to do, evaluations and after actions reports and all these things. And I would do the same thing. I just go into lockdown mode and I put my brain on it and boom, I'd go through it. And just get it done. I would just be able to focus. So like each thing. Laser focus. Laser so focus. That report, done. Gone. Yeah, like, Memo. Okay, give me that. Oh, no, Gone. Done. Report, done. Done. Okay. Okay, so I go to Iraq the first time. No big deal. I go to Iraq the second time. Dude, you know, it's a much tougher deployment. It's guys are getting wounded. Guys, My guys are getting killed. And I come home. And I get put into uh, running the training, and with running the training, all of a sudden, yeah, there's administrative requirements, and there was administrative requirements overseas as well. And you know what we did? Locked them down and got them done. I get home, and I remember the first time I got to do, I think it's evaluations, which in the military, in the Navy anyways, doing evaluations is a real pain. It's a real big administrative Administration task. of, or evaluation evaluations of your troops. Evaluations of all the troops. Yeah, so yeah. at this place I was at, Huge running training, yes. I had 100 guys, and every one of them is like a little mini term paper or something it has to be perfect right right it's in the person's military record forever they're really stressful about it and i used to have no problem just hammering those things out so i get back from that deployment and and i'm sitting down and and you know i start doing i'm like "Ah, this is stupid this doesn't matter i don't know why i'm doing this right why do i have to do i kind of started saying the same things that i would always brag on people for saying like, this is stupid. Oh, now your men are stupid. You don't want to fill out the report and take care of your guys. You don't want to good, write a good evaluation. The rest evaluation. of their career isn't, yeah. isn't worth your yeah. five oh, it's minutes not worth to your write five this? Minutes. Okay. You know, so I, but I heard myself saying this. Right. And what, and what, what the constant undertone of all this was that this stuff doesn't matter. Combat was what mattered. And, and when you get back from that situation where, right. Man, your buddies are getting killed. You're getting wounded. Your friends are getting wounded. This piece of paper, it doesn't matter. And you say to yourself, I don't care about this. And at some point, and it didn't, it took me maybe two or three months. I did what I had to do to get by. But as I sit there and I looked at myself and I said, you know what? The combat doesn't matter anymore you're not in it you're not in it right now right, right. this is now what matters your, your mind was still there my mind was still there thinking that that was all that matters and like i said on our last podcast actually it's in the past and it doesn't matter anymore so you know what you have to do you have to be a man and you have to do your job now and this is what matters now and that to me made a big transition for me. And it, you know, I haven't even thought about this until until you were talking about it because I remember what it was like to to go from when I went to college and when I was before I deployed Romani, I would just be so laser focused, be able to just burn through things. Right. And then it, when I got back, and it was not there, and it was all because I thought, ah, oh, this stuff doesn't matter. This doesn't matter. It it doesn't matter. What matters, you know, there's guys getting killed overseas right now. That's what matters. And I had to say, you know what? No, that stuff doesn't matter right now. And you know, and also I was in charge of training. And I said, what matters is doing this, getting guys trained to go overseas. And I became obsessed with that and slightly psychotic about getting guys ready for combat. I mean, I was preparing them for what they were about to go into. For what they were going into. And, you know, you could, I'm sure there were many uh, SEALs that went through the training that I was overall in charge of and would attest to the fact that I was probably pretty borderline psychopathic at that point but i think that that's, that's who i want running my training no absolutely. offense dude but i want a psycho running my combat training yep yep so i, I but think what go ahead okay you were just gonna say you think i think that telling yourself and recognizing to yourself why are you trying to do this thing because you're trying to do something because it does matter right it, yeah. it has to matter in some way even if it's just but filling out the paperwork to get your license from the DMV. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that doesn't matter. Oh, actually, you know what? It does matter. 
You're going to get arrested if you get pulled. You know, it's like, no, it does matter. These little things, these little stupid, meaningless tasks in life, they actually do matter. So you know what you do? You line them up and you freaking crush them. That's what you do. That's what you do. You line up these stupid, meaningless things and you crush them and you use them as an exercise in discipline. They become an exercise in discipline. Oh, this thing doesn't matter. Guess what? I'm going to crush it now. Bring it to me. Where's my DMV form? Watch me fill this out. (laughs) That's what I'm going to do. So maybe I turn like some little meaningless things into a personal competition of discipline, but maybe how, that's how consistent are you making that happen though? This is, I, I'm, this uh, is I'm me consistent. talking to you now. Let me tell you. So for for instance, since we started the podcast, I I have to read, you know, basically a book a week, and then once I read it, I've got to go back into it. Yeah, you do like a book report and and go back through it and say, yeah. and how is this going to flow together? What part? So I'm spending a lot of time on that right now, and I've been able to do it every time so far. Okay. Um, so I think my because I've lost my strong. ability to be consistent, and that's mo- that's what's really bumming me out. Like when well, I when I your book isn't I mean it's thick, but I should have been able to read this in two or three solid days of reading. Yes, I told you how successful I was. Yes, not very, and that. Bugs the shit out of me, <laughs> and I, it's a it's a it, it's a uh, it's a fail. It's a it's a. You know what though? I think this it's is it's a failure on my part. I I, th- I think that this is the same thing that we were talking about on the last podcast, and I think Echo said when you say, "Oh, you know what? I'm not going to finish this book right now." It's it, I don't really want to. It's sort of like when you say, "Oh, I'm not going to." Quit no, it's Oxycontin. not that I don't want to, though. That's what I'm saying. You say, but I don't want to do it right now. I can push it off a little bit. You accept that. You accept that answer. Mm. You accept that answer. The soldier, Jody, right, wouldn't accept that answer. Would not. Do you self talk? Not really. Not really. Mm. I'm not a guy that says, you know, I'm going to do this or I'm going to do that. I just do it. Right. I just go and do whatever that thing is. I think because you're you kind of have become that, so it's more of like I mean, put kind of crudely, that's habitual for you to just yes. do it. You know, yes. remember how? And it was I think it was kind of funny where where I use this example, like how you said use it as an exercise of dis- discipline. So I I said this example one time where I was in line at the grocery store and I had um, a. 12 pack of beer. Do we have and, to relive this story right else. now? <laughs> and I was standing in line and there was maybe three, four people in front of me. So I'm like, all right, it's going to be a while for me to get up there. This beer is getting And you heavy. decided you were going to hold the beer. I exactly remember this story. Right. I remember this story. Oh, yeah. Dang. So exactly right. But it wasn't that, okay. And the reason I decided to hold the beer wasn't because that benefited me right then. It, it was an exercise right. in mental Here, But here's the create. Okay. We're getting, we're way off the question, but. Physical tasks, sure, no problem. Yeah, because it's it's visceral, it's real. I yeah. can feel it. But to sit down and 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 read the report on the sewer charges that are going to be coming in on the tax report for the city mm-hmm. next year, what's on? What's going on on Twitter? Yeah, you know, like it's uh, kind of the same thing, though. Really, except, it, but I'm wondering. I'm wondering level. if my brain hasn't replaced the oxycotton with social media. Yeah, I like think- I had to quit drinking because. Okay, well now we're way off the thing, but it, the the hardcover came out last September, and the hardcover. Of I'm Jody sorry, Mittick's of unflinching uh, the unflinching. making of a Canadian sniper by Jody Mittick, <laughs> <laughs> printed by Simon and Schuster, Canada, available on Amazon, available on right Amazon through JockoStore.com. <laughs> Click the link to Amazon. Um, <laughs> but yeah, okay, yeah. So well, the, I already said, I already said it, out. I already said it. So anyway, the hardcover came you had to out. Quit drinking. I drank every day from the day it came up. So we had 450 people at the event. Uh, uh, Kevin Newman, my buddy, who's who's a he's a well known news anchor in Canada, does an interview with me on the stage, and we get a standing ovation. We go out, we celebrate. Me, the president of the company, my editor, we we have a good good night. The next day, if I wasn't having one drink, I was having ten, and that went from September to the New Year. Yeah. And I was getting fat, and I, you know, I was sleeping in because I'm hungover, and I'm not going to the gym, and and I went, hang on, what's going on? Because this is because I have my job mm-hmm. as politician, I'm daddy, 
you know, I'm friend, you know, I'm, 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 I'm advocate. And then, you know, the, the book is, it's a job, right? You know, selling a book's a job, full-time job. I need nine days a week and 36 hours a day to do it. And so I had to make, make that's one of the reasons why I decided to do the bodybuilding thing. Cause I'm like, well, you can't drink and it'll be right till November. Cause I need that. So I'm trying to figure out if my brain is looking for a new habit. Cause I was diagnosed before as like anti addictive, if that's even a real thing. But I had a doctor tell me once, he's like, you're pretty much an anti addictive personality. Like you won't get addicted to stuff. And there I was addicted to Oxycontin. <laughs> Even though it's a physical thing more than a mental thing, but I still wouldn't trust me with a pill right now. Yeah. Anyway, I think but, I, we but, got way off track, but uh, I just... Again, and I don't know what your therapist is going to tell you. I'm going to tell you what Jocko would tell you, though. These little things are things that you... I know you know how to do them. Yeah. You've done them your whole career in the military. You were watching a crossroad. And I know that might sound exciting to people that are out there that are thinking how crazy that must be. No, there's times where Jody was walk- watching a crossroad and there was nothing going on for four days. Yeah. And he was watching that crossroad. And so you have that in you. Yeah. You just got to tell yourself that, you know what, this stuff now, this is what matters. And how are you going to tell yourself that this is what matters? It's because this is how it connects to the strategic picture. You can't say that this matters because of what it is right in front of me. Just like when you're looking at the crossroads, you're not thinking, oh, this crossroads is important because the crossroads is important. No, the the reason it's important is because you are supporting keeping guys alive, which is going to help a mission out, which is going to help the the overall strategy win. The commander's intent. The commander's intent. The whole nine yards. So I'm the commander now. You are the commander. And also, what's your long-term mission? And that's like kind of you just said it yourself like oh I picked bodybuilding because I there you just gave yourself a mission right so what's your administrative mission you know Echo's made some big advances lately because he started freaking reading books nice and he wasn't doing that before but he he got the long term mission of like you know what I'm gonna learn as much as I possibly can so you got a long term mission with your constituents right to be the best city councilman and represent so when they ask you a question you're like boom. That's kind of the sort of psycho stuff that I would say is like, if anybody ever asked me a question, like when I was going to college, I, if they asked me any question about any of the reading, I'm going to know it. That's just a bizarre, P, uh, o, what's that, OCD thing to be like, I'm going to know everything. So you have four kids, you train every day, you get up at four in the morning. I got to get up at four in the morning. That's it. <laughs> That's my answer. Yeah. Yeah, and we're, sorry, we're, sorry to riff on you guys on that, man. Like, no, I, I know you wanted away. to do the questions, but when that guy, when that, like, the the, the first question was easy because I'm like, oh, I'll just talk about what I used to do, and then that one was like, well, if I was to try and answer right now, I'd be lying, I'd be a liar, yeah, and I yeah. can't. I I have my moments still. Don't get me wrong. I'll have moments where I'm like, this has to get done, and I'll fire through a speech or I'll I'll write a report or whatever it is and then I, and then I lose it and it's yeah. like ah ah fuck it, it's gone and that's actually re- uh, reinforcing what I just said so when you have a near term mission that you know what the outcome you know what the result is you know what the end state is you know what the commander's intent is like hey you got a speech in 2 days okay now it's in 1 day you can sit down and concentrate and get it done which where you've missed the connection now is the connection between these menial tasks right right that don't mean anything and how can I put them to a long-term strategic goal? And one of those long-term strategic goals you can put into place, if nothing else, is I'm going to discipline my mind to do these menial tasks like a soldier. And that's pretty cool. Ooh, yeah. That's a t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, potentially. Thank you, Jocko. But so that's... whoever asked that question, uh, thank you for asking it. Although I went off and talked about me for the most of it. Speaking of tangents, Echo's going to take it a little further out there. No, no, it's not a tangent. It's what you said, how you said that's what a soldier does. So that's like a little exercise. And and I did this this in a a couple of times. Okay. Like one was how I quit drinking was I figured out, and you can do this with your diet as well. I figured out that basically through all the, the stuff that I read that you're wanting to eat junk food or drink or whatever is your brain tricking you. Because right. it's built to, it's evolved for a certain environment that that environment doesn't work, isn't around Survival. anymore. Yeah. Yeah. So now we're in an environment of abundance. It has to do with dopamine. Anyway, I came to the conclusion that it's your brain falling for a trick. Your physiology of your brain falling for a trick makes you want this stuff. How he says, how Jocko says, that's not what a soldier would do. 
I had it in my mind, I'm not going to fall for that trick. I'm not a sucker. That's not, you know, doing this is what suckers do. I'm not a sucker. This is just, it's just like self talking to yourself. So I essentially shamed myself <laughs> out of drinking. Yeah. Just I, like he's doing the basically the inverse yeah. into focusing, you know. I just remember like I w- I'm the guy that we in Kosovo, I quit smoking in a day. Mm-hmm. Because I couldn't run up the hill next to our camp. I said, "Well, obviously these things aren't good anymore." Mm-hmm. And I literally just I just I, I even had a pack in my pocket for like a week. I was just like, "Yeah, oh yeah, okay, just throw those out." I want that guy back. And I'm in search. I think it's been 10 years since I was wounded. I think I'm going to find him again, probably on the stage for this bodybuilding thing or something. But yeah. I just I just couldn't answer that question without talking about that because I don't I wouldn't have been truthful at that's, this point in my life. And that's what's cool is maybe that question right there well, something that is, is forcing you to face that. Yeah. I mean, you might have had it in the back of your mind, but now you're going, you know what? I can't answer that, honestly, because I'm not there yeah. right now. I'm not. But I'm going to get back there real quick. I have my moments. So stand by, people. Stand by. <laughs> Soldiers coming back online. Reboot. Jody 3.0. <laughs>